What's the stitch? All Lears needs help covering Mickey's not so scary Halloween party? Sorry, Kimmy, but you can't help anyone dress that way. Have you looked in the mirror lately? Let's go, sister. <laughs> it might only be August, but it's officially Halloween here in Disney World. We are here for the first night of Mickey's not so scary Halloween party for a full review. Woo! Let's do it. Full review. Full, full review. review. Full review. We're sweating. Halloween. It's really so warm. hot. It's, it's like really a, warm. it's like 110. Do you guys like my bangs? I cut them myself. We're waiting outside the park gates. Yeah. Five more minutes until we can get in because you can't get in early. We'll talk a little bit about it in a second, but not so scary. I'm so excited. Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party is a seasonal event that takes place in Magic Kingdom on select nights from August 11th to November 1st. Yep, Disney celebrates Halloween for three whole months. There are rare characters, exclusive snacks, an amazing parade, trick-or-treating, and so much more. But is this After Hours event worth the high price tag? We're gonna find out. So, at the After Hours parties, you do not have to enter the park right when the party starts. In fact, your ticket grants you admission to the theme park earlier than that. The party doesn't start until 7 p.m. tonight, but at 4 p.m., party guests were allowed into Magic Kingdom. No separate ticket and no park reservation required. All you need is that Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party ticket. This is an awesome, awesome benefit to the parties, and I highly recommend taking advantage of it to get your money's worth. As you enter, you will get a wristband. This year, there are these really cute ribbon wristbands that say Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party, uh, and they're just on your wrist for the whole night so that they can see that you're supposed to be in the park once the park closes to regular guests at 6 p.m. Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party is a separately ticket after hours event. It takes place from 7 p.m. to midnight, and you can enter at 4 p.m. with the party starting at 7. If you want to spend all day in Magic Kingdom, you will have to buy two tickets, but yes. we don't recommend that. We we'll don't. talk a little bit about it later. If you do come to Magic Kingdom in the fall season, I highly recommend checking if it's a Mickey's Not So Scary night, because if you are not headed to the party, you will have to leave the park a whole lot earlier than a typical open to close day. So it's better to go to Magic Kingdom on not party nights. Ticket prices range from 109 to $199 for adults and from $99 to $189 for kids, getting more expensive the closer you get to Halloween night. Now when it comes to whether or not it's worth it to get here at 4, definitely yeah, you're leaving money on the table if you don't. Also wait times are low, it's not even 5 o'clock yet so the party doesn't start for a while and people are still here from the regular park day because the park doesn't close until 6 but Space Mountain's 20 minutes, Pirates is 10. Haunted Mansion is 40, but you know, spooky it's vibes. Spooky, yeah. But even Seven Dwarfs Mine Train is 60 minutes, which is pretty low for an afternoon like this. So even before the party starts, you're going to see lower wait times. So get here at four. Don't waste your money. So if you do get here at four, you can check out some of those rides. But there's more to do too. There are some treats that are not exclusive to the party that are available all day around Magic Kingdom. So you could go ahead and grab those so you can save your party time for all those party treats. And of course, there's merchandise. You can even buy the party exclusive merchandise as long as you have a party ticket before the party starts uh, most of the time. Uh, there might be something that goes wrong, but that's generally the plan. The special Mickey's Not So Scary merch is available at the Emporium on Main Street and at Star Traders in Tomorrowland. Uh, now these items are typically very high in demand, so even though it might be inconvenient to carry stuff around all night, you might want to stop by early before the party starts just to get a sense of what they have and so that you don't use your precious party hours shopping for merch. So there is a little bit of a line inside to check out the merch, although nothing wild. You do have to have a wristband. You have to have a not so scary ticket to be able to go to the back and see that not so scary merchandise. All right, so one of the really fun things about Mickey's Not So Scary is there is actually a separate entrance to the party and it kind of goes off to the side on this path that you might not have ever walked on before. Um, you just kind of head to the right of Main Street, tons of cast members will direct you. And you'll see these big blow up pillars that say Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. If you follow those, you'll see some more pumpkins. See this little side street with tons of people on it heading into the party. My favorite part of this separate party entrance is that there are the cutest ever uh, statues back here, like Three Musketeer Donald. And look, he's carved Daisy into his pumpkin. Pluto has carved a pumpkin too with a bone in it, which is impressive because I'm not under the impression that Pluto has opposable thumbs. Princess Minnie has a little Mickey pumpkin. So cute. And I wasn't aware that Goofy had such an aerobic background. Did you know that Goofy could do this? Yeah, I did. Oh. I knew the whole time. On the way in, we found some All Ears yeah. fit friends. 
And they look amazing as 101 Dalmatians, Cruella, and a dog catcher, Jasper, Jasper specifically. Yeah, specifically. Uh, yeah, specifically Jasper. Well, you guys look awesome. Have such a fun party tonight. And you definitely do want to enter through this little side pathway because this is where you'll get your treat bag. Uh, on one side it says, let's boo this with Vampire Mickey. And on the other it says, Happy Halloween, trick or treat Walt Disney World. This is totally free with your party or, you know, included. And uh, it's how you're gonna get all your good candy. I think we should get some good candy. Hi. Hi. Happy Halloween. Thank Happy you Halloween. so much. All right, our first snack of the night, M&M's. M&M's. Chocolate candy, sponge brownie. We found Cinderella and the fairy godmother. So are all your friends here. You guys look fantastic. Hi. <laughs> Another fun little aspect of the party is all these 3D photo ops, which are just super cute and themed. It makes you feel like you're stepping into the photo op. Can make for a really fun photo. Uh, they do have a bit of line at the start of the party, but they tend to go down as the party goes on. Making Santa Scary Halloween Party is one of the only times, actually is the only time in it Disney World, that adults can wear costumes, full costumes in the parks. That's interesting. Very. We've seen a lot of cool costumes on St. Ollier's Friends that we've met on the way in here. But I mean, I don't know. I love these shirts from Disney Food Blog. They are great shirts. But if it's the only time we can wear a costume. Then I think we better wear a costume. Well, that's oh a lot Oh my gosh. Better. I got my hair dyed. Yeah. We went, the, we went in the bathroom in Tomorrowland and we dyed Emma's hair. Yeah. Yeah. Does it look, does it look okay? Yeah. Very, Kim Possible and Chigo, if it was unclear. Yeah. Um, and uh, now we're gonna fist fight, so. Bye, you guys. Bye. Thanks for watching the video. Something to keep in mind for costumes is that there are still rules, no prop weapons, no masks. And if you're dressed like a Disney character, you're not allowed to sign autographs or pose for pictures so as not to ruin the magic. You can find all of the costume guidelines on Disney's website. And if you need help with a Halloween costume, you can check out All Ears Style. All right, friends, so we have split up just for a little bit. And for my first snack tonight, I get to try the Skull Brownie from the cart right here next to the entrance of the Haunted Mansion. It does look like a skull. And I can't lie to you, it is creepy. Arguably the scariest thing I've ever seen at Mickey's Not So Scary. But I will say I absolutely loved this brownie. It was super fudgy, even though it was slightly on the dry side, which it wasn't bad. And the spices were really subtle and robust. It gave it a great depth of flavor, but there was no spice or heat necessarily. The only thing that I was really lacking is I didn't find any of the Dolce de Leche filling. And I really think I would have loved it because there was a hint of it holding the candy eyes on and it was delicious. So just wish there had been more of that, but overall pretty tasty. All right, I have made my way over to Adventureland because we are starting our night off with treats. There are party exclusive snacks and treats that you can find all around. They are marked on that physical party map or in your My Disney Experience app in the event guide. And my first stop is here at Sunshine Tree Terrace where we're going to get a pretty spooky little dessert. First party treat, we've got the Tropical Graveyard. This is mango mousse and sour tropical gelatin topped with cookie crumbles, gummy worm, sprinkles, and a tombstone chocolate piece that is melting. So I'm gonna give it a try. Very good, very good. Um, it was super summery and fruity, which I actually really appreciate because these parties start in August. So if you go straight to fall flavors, it can feel a little out of place. So I like this one that was like spooky, but still summery. I'm also a big fan of any like dirt, worms and dirt dessert, so I loved it. And there were cookie crumbs on the top and bottom, so tons of cookie crumbs. The mango mousse super light, kind of light on the mango flavor. I wish there had been a bit more. Biggest flavor came from that tropical gelatin, which was kind of like passion fruit, but more of just like a vague tropical fruit vibe. It was sour, but not like pucker your mouth sour. Kind of like Jolly Rancher green apple sour. Overall, pretty tasty. It was just really small for $6, so not sure if it's the best use when you could just get a bunch of free candy. But uh, I've got more to eat. Our next stop is gonna be here at Sleepy Hollow Refreshments where we're actually gonna grab a few treats. All right, so here is what we are trying for Sleepy Hollow. We are trying actually all three of the items for the party this year. This is the Char Siu Chicken Wings. It's a whole jumbo chicken wings guys in Char Siu, topped with chili threads and garlic. Over here, we have the Headless Horseman Cupcake. It's a yellow cupcake topped with cream cheese buttercream, spicy cheese flavored snacks, and a chocolate piece. Here is the cinnamon funnel cake. It is a funnel cake topped with pumpkin ice cream drizzled with pumpkin spiced caramel and finished with butterscotch chips. I'm so excited. Okay, I'm gonna start with the Headless Horseman Cupcake because it seems the craziest and it's also the messiest, weirdly, so. Mm. It's a normal cupcake, it's fine. The cheese piece that they're talking about on top is basically a hot Cheeto 
so it's an interesting cupcake more interesting than just like your normal cupcake there's a little bit of spice but overall it's fine i wouldn't go out of my way to get it but it's a pretty picture i will say for a cupcake the icing melted surprisingly fast i mean it's an absolute mess right now and i really have not had it that long so something to consider if you're going to share it or if you want your kiddos to have it it's going to get really messy very very quickly okay next up i'm going to try the char siu wings this is probably what i'm the most excited to try hmm give me a moment absolutely delicious this was so tasty the wings for me were literally falling off the bone they were very moist which i was pretty surprised at for a theme park wing um it is very messy it's pretty i mean it's a large wing and it, for me it just made more sense to break it down to eat it but it just got really messy um i will say i expected a little bit more spice there was no spice at all like absolutely none the char siu was really really tasty to put it simply, I think it reminded me of like a less sweet teriyaki sauce. It's a little bit on the sweeter side, but mixed with that savory chicken, it's just really nice and subtle. I would definitely get these again. Maybe not the cupcake, but I would get those again. Next up for the cinnamon funnel cake, it was to die for. This is my favorite thing here, but I need to stress something. I'm a pumpkin spice latte lover. Pumpkin spice is the heavy flavor here. It's actually, the cinnamon is very subtle, but that big scoop of pumpkin spice ice cream right on top is so delicious. Um, it's just really tasty. It's very robust flavors. And then the butterscotch chips just melted in my mouth. It was so sweet, but not in a like sugary sense, in like a spice sense. Easily the best thing I've had here. Okay, here is our Cosmic Rays haul. A very spooky vibe happening over here at Cosmic Rays. So here we have the terrifying twice spice chicken sandwich, which is a spicy fried chicken breast dipped in hot honey and topped with pepper jack cheese, jalapeno poppers, and bacon served with french fries. We've got the zombie fingers, which are almond cookie fingers, key lime pie, white chocolate ganache, salted caramel crisp pearls, and sugar eyes. Then there's the Snarlin' Sub, which is a meatball sub with spicy marinara, pesto, and pearl mozzarella on a black roll, served with french fries as well. And finally, we have the River Sticks Elixir, a kiwi lemonade with luster dust, which means she's super sparkly. I'm so excited to try it all out. Um, I love that there are so many savory options. Typically, like parties, there's not enough savory options, and I'm a savory girl forever, for life. So I'm excited, but I am gonna start with the drink. This is the River Sticks Elixir. Oh, that's tasty. I was scared because it's radioactive green and like I was worried it was gonna be a super fake taste. And it is a little bit fake, but not horribly. It's kind of like Minute Maid lemonade fake as opposed to like fresh squeeze, but not like, you know, a Fanta. So kiwi flavor is actually very, very forward here. It's not sour or tart, it's sweet, but not cloying. Um, honestly, super refreshing. This is another one that I would say relatively summery which is awesome I, I i just went to food and wine which is in august and all the food there was like fall flavors but this is amazing like this is super summery and still kind of spooky and it shimmers what more do you want i i'm hesitant about this one because it looks like fingers nails and all It's like key lime pie. This stuff in the bottom is just like a key lime pie, like, I mean, it's key lime ganache, which makes sense, but it's like so key lime pie and delicious. Um, it's a little sour, but in the way that like a good key lime pie is. And it's not quite as thick as like key lime pie filling. I also think this is one of the things that like actually pulls off its aesthetic. All right, going for the meatball sub. The bread is dry. You're gonna wanna drink with this for sure. But I'm actually impressed. The meatballs are kind of boring. They're like plain meatballs, definitely not like a real Italian meatball. But with the pesto, the marinara, and the mozzarella, there's a really satisfying red pepper kind of heat to it that's like really mild and just kind of there on the aftertaste. The pesto like adds for just like the shot of herbaceous basil and the um, mozzarella of course just ties it all together and it gets all melty on there. 
Don't get me wrong, it's not worlds better than a meatball sub from Subway, but the filling is actually better than a meatball sub from Subway, which is saying something because I just got it at Cosmic Race. I like this, I get this again. Okay, and I'm wrapping up with the chicken sandwich. It has a jalapeno popper on it. Best part of this, hands down that jalapeno popper. I've never had jalapeno popper on a sandwich, especially not like on a hot honey chicken sandwich. My goodness, is it good. Now this is Disney spicy, and I, that means not very spicy. If you can tolerate the faintest bit of heat, you can tolerate this, it is not that spicy, despite having jalapeno and hot honey. I just love having the jalapeno popper on the sandwich. It adds like crispiness from its fried outside. You can still get a little snap of the pepper and there's the cheesiness and like the unmistakable jalapeno popper flavor that like only jalapeno poppers have. The bacon texturally, not the best. Um, and again, our sandwich is a little, our bread's a little dry on the bun. But huge honkin' piece of chicken that's cooked relatively well, very moist, super crispy and fried well. It's not the most photogenic, it's not the most Halloween-y, but if you need dinner, I think you should go for one of the specialty treats, not one of the regular things you can get at Cosmic Rays. And I think that this is a good move. And that's a sampling of some of the party exclusive treats. There's a lot more, we'll do a little montage for you here. And that's not the only dining. There's also regular like chicken tenders at Cosmic Rays. You also can actually get reservations at Be Our Guest and Cinderella's Royal Table, which might get you an easier reservation, but you're gonna spend a lot of your party time at those restaurants. So I don't recommend doing that. You're spending a lot of money on that party ticket, so unless you happen to be using the party ticket completely in lieu of your visit to Magic Kingdom, then maybe, but uh, I, I wouldn't use the party for a dining reservation like that. I better find Emma. It is so hard to keep track of each other during these parties. Hi, Sugar Treat. Good, how are you? Thank you so much. You're welcome. So when it comes to trick-or-treating, um, there is actually lots of stations set up throughout all of Magic Kingdom. Um, there are going to be locations set up for you on the map, so it's easy to find. I just went through Columbia Harbor House. When it first started tonight, the line for Columbia Harbor House was literally all the way outside. Luckily, that was not the case when I walked through. So sometimes if the line is super long, maybe come back later. However, I will say they can run out of candy, so be aware of that. Now there are a handful of ride overlays during Mickey's Not So Scary. One of them is here at Mad Tea Party. Typically, a madcap spin in teacups. It's still that, except with a little bit of a spooky vibe. There's also an overlay over at Space Mountain. Oh yeah, look at that, very spooky. There's also an overlay over at Space Mountain where it is much darker. It's the deep space version and there's spooky music. And there's an overlay at Monsters Inc. Laugh Floor where the whole show is just kind of Halloween themed. Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, in past years, Pirates of the Caribbean has had pirates on the ride. Although this year, the pirates are outside. So, you can interact with pirates as you walk through. You don't actually have to ride the ride to experience sort of the piratey antics. And there's even a pirate band. That's Captain Jack. Captain Jack. Beware his pirate attack. The one you know. He's a pirate that everyone knows. So another one of the incredible parts of this entire Halloween party make these not so scary is some of the characters that you're going to see that you will not see any other time of the year. Welcome to the mansion. I am Renata, one of your 999 happy haunts. Did you know that only one night of the year we can materialize so you can all see us? And tonight is the night! I know, I know. Oh, you want a picture? I'll, I'll, wait, I'll pose. I'll pose for you. Oh, that's haunting. I love that. Did you do some modeling in your past life? Oh, stop it. I was known on the cotillion debutante scene as quite a looker. <laughs> looker, I said, sir. I said looker. All right, so I just got to have some fun conversations with Renata all about modeling and nothing that I've necessarily experienced, but clearly she has. It's not necessarily a character meet and greet, but it is a character encounter. So they do these several times. Um, Carlotta and Renata are the best two examples. It's one of the best parts of Not So Scary to me. It's so much fun. Yeah, it's fuzzy. Fuzzy, it is fuzzy. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a dead animal. I could tell you're a real pirate. Yeah, You're how? shooting me with your cannon. I didn't, I tend to do that, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You doing pillaging and plundering tonight? Right, I'm trying. Okay, I, you know, it's not going well? It's not too easy, no. It, oh, I mean, it seems hard. If I, you know, these people are easily spotted. Yeah. <laughs> 
they are. Thought they are. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I could pillage them. You could try to pillage them. Yeah. yeah. It's an option for sure. Are you carrying some food? Um, no. Here's what I recommend. Yes. If you have some booty, okay. hide it. Okay, hide it. Captain Barbosa just released the Kraken. Oh my gosh. And we all know you should never show the Kraken your booty. No. I had my map out on the table and my dog walked across the ink and onto my map. Well, that's probably... And now Spot marks the X. And there's an also scary meet and greet with Captain Jack. Now, Captain Jack is a character you can typically meet during the day in Magic Kingdom. So I don't know if I'd recommend this one if you do have a day in Magic Kingdom, but it's a very short line, which is pretty neat. So another specialty thing you can do here at the party is special magic shots. Uh, I'm here in Liberty Square. I'm going to do two of them right now. I'm in line for the second one. But there are tons throughout the party, and you can just check the party map to see exactly those locations. Okay, now I've got to move pretty quick if I want to get over to my parade spot. But while I do that, I want to talk a little bit about Tron Light Cycle Run. Tron Light Cycle Run is available for the party tonight. Uh, the catch is it's still virtual queue. So it works kind of the same way it does for extended evening hours in that if you have party admission at 6 p.m., you can attempt to join the virtual queue in the app. Now, the queue was gone by about 6.30, so I think it went pretty quick. Uh, obviously, there are limited spaces in that virtual queue. If you want to do that, go ahead into the My Disney Experience app, find the virtual queues, and right at 6 o'clock, I mean literally on the second, refresh that page and hit Join Virtual Queue, and hopefully you'll be able to get a spot. Now, as it, when it comes to whether or not we recommend riding Tron during the party, I'm going to go with I wouldn't if you have another Magic Kingdom day. If it's your only chance to ride Tron, do it. It's probably also a much shorter virtual queue wait than it would be during a regular park day where the virtual queue is typically about an hour long wait. Uh, however, Tron is not souped up for the party. There is no ride overlay and there's a lot of party fun to see. Okay, here's another interesting thing. The parade is about to start, the early parade. And uh, the line for Stitch, which was an hour earlier, is now listed as 45 minutes. But there's no one in it, so I'm not sure that it actually is. But those character lines are going to be really busy earlier. And if you go during a parade time, you might have a little more luck seeing a character. We have so far been very blessed with good weather too. Uh, I don't want to jinx it, but typically parties don't look like this. I am knocking on wood next time I see it. Ah, the uh, Hocus Pocus Villain Spectacular is happening. We are back. In the living world. Oh, the living world. Yes, and don't you understand? We have harnessed the magic found within this kingdom. Shadow Man! Don't you disrespect me, little lady? Little storm! Don't you derogate or deride. Look We're who I back found! Together again. So we have come to my favorite parade watching spot, which is opposite Country Bear Jamboree. Um, the parade stops off in Frontierland, so if you're back here, you're going to be among the first to see the parade. And it also tends to be less crowded. It is still very crowded, the entire parade route is. Booty U is awesome. If you want lower crowds, you're going to want to go to the second Booty U parade, uh, because typically a lot of the families will go home by the time it's 11.15. But the first parade's at 9.15, pretty much everybody goes to see that one. So it's going to be a whole lot more crowded. Um, that said, we did get a pretty good spot here in Frontierland, and we're so excited to see the Headless Horse in, and the Grave Diggers, so and the villains. Last year it was raining, so yes. we didn't get to see like we the did not. Of it, I've but. still never seen the Headless Horse in. Well, that's not true. Maybe once when I was a child.
just finished. Check. That is hands down the best Disney parade, no Disney question. World parade that is currently in existence, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. Um, it's so long. The floats are amazing, but you don't even look at the floats because the dancing, the choreography, the costumes, the music, yeah. it's all so good. What was your favorite part? Um, honestly, for me, I love the grave diggers. I feel like that's an easy answer, but like watching them dig up the sparks and stuff is so neat. But they're always here, and my new favorite was easily the Sanderson sisters. Yeah. Because Minnie, Daisy, and Clarabelle. 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 <laughs> Minnie, Daisy, and Clarabelle were the Sanderson sisters this year. It's not like new costumes, but it's the first time they've been in this parade, and it they looked so They good. looked amazing. Oh. Oogie Boogie looked Oogie amazing. Oogie Boogie was so cool. I think for me, my favorite part of this parade is seeing Captain Barbosa on the yeah. float, and in general, the pirate float, because Angelica and Jack are on it as well. It's a whole pirate ship. And then on top of that, I also really love the Haunted Mansion dancers. Yeah, they I were I love incredible. the ballroom ghosts. So good. So oh. beautiful. The whole parade. The whole parade's perfect. We've not even mentioned the Headless Horseman. If there is one thing you make happen during Not So Scary, it should be see Boo to you. Agreed. Wholeheartedly agreed. Yeah. I, I would trade everything else to get to see it. Even when my family came when I was a kid to do um, Mickey's Not So Scary, we came literally for the rides because there's no wait times. This is the one thing we really made sure to stop and do. Yeah. Um, and that's what I remember the most. And yeah. it's just so much fun. It's amazing. There's a lot of other entertainment as well. For instance, right now, it's the Cadaver Day. Uh, which is the Dapper Dance, but dead. They're dead. Yeah. It's okay. They'll be alive in the daytime again. Yeehaw! You ever seen she go square dance in Frontierland? No, you haven't. I think you haven't. I could almost guarantee. I think guarantee this is the first time the Shigo first. has ever Frontierland It's Kind of a huge, huge deal for me. Yeah. There is also so much fun and exciting entertainment during this party. There's shows, there are fireworks, we've talked parades already. Now we have split up a few times throughout the night just to kind of get it all covered, but we could not have done this at all without our amazing reporters. So super big shout out to them who are helping us cover all of it. Uh, one of those things they're helping us cover is the Disney Junior Dance Party, which we can go check out right now. Now what you got to make some noise for my favorite meerkat, so the Not So Spooky Spectacular mm -hmm. um, is a special fireworks show. This is an interesting fireworks show. Yeah. Because it really, instead of being like a clip show, like most fireworks show, it kind of is like watching a Mickey short. Yeah, it's like, it tells an entire story. Mickey and their friends, they go into what seems like maybe a haunted mansion. They see some ghosts. It's a little crazy. I don't want to spoil too much of it, but it is like a full show. Yeah. And what's even crazier is Jack Skellington himself comes out on stage and intros the story of Mickey and his friends. And it's so wild. I was watching all the way down Main Street and I could see him, not clearly obviously, but I could see Jack Skellington. They do an amazing job with him and he looks so spooky. The way they do Jack is really, really impressive. It's one of those little Disney magic things that kind of makes you think, how did they do that? Yeah, for but sure. But I don't want to know. For sure, you that's know, exactly how I feel. It was really, really wonderful. Yeah. I think it's great. And it also, I think it's nice that it's different and it does tell a story rather than being Me too. And I love a good song. Yeah, for but me. it's just nice. The best parts of it are the candy corn fireworks, mm -hmm. Jack Tellington, Bone Castle. Bone Castle is incredible. Yeah. Yeah, for me, it's a hands down Jack. Yeah. Jack Skellington is just such an incredible character that they've created, and I'm just so impressed with how well they've done it mm -hmm. on such a large scale. So yeah. I think that's the best part. And for sure worth seeing. It's one of those things that's a party exclusive, and you should see it during the party, even yeah. if it's while you're eating a treat or, yeah. you know, even if it's in passing, it's just worth taking a glance at. Yeah, and honestly, if you're just interested in Jack or just a quick few fireworks, you can definitely watch the beginning and then maybe leave halfway. Yeah. You won't get the story, but but if you're not fully interested in the story, that's okay too. Yeah. Now I'm on my way to hopefully meet seven very cool characters. <laughs> What's going on? Really yeah. In the world. Yeah, you gotta, Grumpy, you simmer down. If we ever saw an old hag, she could save Oh, yeah, I could stop an old hag. Okay, does that make you come around to me? Okay, okay. Don't eat any pie, okay? That you don't know where it came from. Only if snow made it. <laughs> So there are specialty meet and greets at the Halloween party. We've seen a couple today. We saw Alice and Mad Hatter out and about as well as Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Typically not meet and greets you can find in Magic Kingdom. Also on the map were people like Jafar, the Queen of Hearts, 
Stitch is here, but he's dressed as Elvis. Um, of course, the creme de la creme of Halloween meet and greets is Jack and Sally. We weren't able to do them tonight because for most of the night, they had above a two hour wait. It was 140 minutes when I looked about an hour into the party. Yikes. Um, but I think that for the meet and greet that I got to do, which was the Seven Dwarves, I am so happy. I think that might be the way to do meet and greets here is pick one that you really, really want to do and try to do it towards the end of the night when the line drops. Do be kind of wary though, don't go too late. They did close the door to the Seven Dwarves at around 11. They said that that might vary, but just maybe get there more than an hour before the party ends if you want to meet characters. It only took me about 25 minutes to wait and meet them when their wait earlier was well over two hours. And it was all Seven Dwarves. And there was photo pass, and the pictures are so good. So the character meet and greets are very cool. That's all I have to say. We did it. That's the end of the party. That's Mickey's Not So Scary. I don't know if you've heard of it. Were you not so scared? I was not so scared. I was not so scared. The only thing that scared me, and you weren't with me, was the brownie okay. I ate. Oh, I saw the photos of yeah, that. Yeah, visually, that was scary. it was disturbing. Yeah, well, we had a great night tonight. Uh, we were incredibly fortunate in it that it did not rain at this party. Yes. First time ever for something, us. Yes, something to be aware of is that all of the holidays parties, uh, until you get into the later uh, Christmas ones, happen during the rainy season. Yes. And every party yes. we've ever been to uh, that we've covered, it has poured so dramatically that it has changed the entertainment schedule and totally messed everything up and just been Has really, impacted the party a lot. Yeah, uh, people have left because the weather was so bad. And obviously what's unfortunate is that that's not predictable. So if you do come to a party that it rains super bad like that, it could mean that you don't have a night like this mm -hmm. where we had a really amazing night. We, did. we got a ton done. We saw the Hocus Pocus show and the parade and the and fireworks. The fireworks. We ate all, lots of the lots snacks. Lots of the snacks. I will say there's no way that you're doing it all in one night. No. And that should not be your plan. You should come up with your priorities and what you want to do and then come up with the best plan to do those. Shows, the later ones are going to be a little easier to get into. Characters are a little easier to meet during the first parade, that kind of thing. Um, but what was your favorite thing you did today? That's actually a very loaded question and I hate that you asked it. But if I had to say, I probably would actually say boo, boo to you parade. Yeah. It was incredible. There's so many characters that you don't really get to see anywhere else mm -hmm. other than that one parade. Not even at the rest of the party. Mm -hmm. um, I really loved it. And then I also loved the Hocus Pocus show. Really? Because all of my favorite villains were in it, minus Ursula. She wasn't there, but I, it was so good. Even Hades was there. Yeah. It's so amazing. And it's just one of those, like, again, you don't see those characters mm -hmm. ever. So definitely a favorite. For me, I loved the boo to you parade. It's, it's amazing. It's so good. Um, and I also loved meeting the dwarfs. But just in general, the whole night, vibes were so high with everybody. Like, everybody was so nice about, like, yeah. our costumes and stuff. And it was just, it was, it was, like, such a fun night. Like, a really fun party. I will say, when it comes to whether or not this is worth the money, it's obviously very expensive. There is one way that I think this party is worth the money, and it is by doing it instead of a park day. Agree. That is the one way that I would pay for this. I would not pay for a park ticket on the day of Mickey's Not So Scary. And instead, I would only pay for Mickey's Not So Scary and make sure to sleep in, have a nice resort day, maybe a big meal, and then come and do from 4 p.m. to midnight, go, 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 not so scary, and maybe do another Magic Kingdom day or what have you, but I, the ticket price is about the same as a regular park day, and the lines are shorter, there's more characters, there's different entertainment offerings, so if you want to do this, I recommend foregoing a park day so that you're not spending a ton of money to experience this and also so you're not exhausted when you try to do a whole park day and then come to this because I saw yeah. people leaving way earlier who would who probably had spent the whole day yeah. since 9 a.m. Especially so. if you have small kiddos unless you're taking a nap maybe midday I mean it's hard for us we've only been here since four it's midnight now a little bit after and I mean we're tired yeah we're excited about it but we're really tired we're adults though and we can have caffeine and your kiddos I mean maybe they're having caffeine but it's gonna sugar. be a sugar it's gonna be a harder day on them so definitely yep. consider only doing half day or even taking a nap if you're gonna attempt to do both Although I've seen a lot of zonked it. out kids in a stroller for sure lots of lots of babies crying but just because they're sleepy just because they're tired yeah I cry when I'm tired sometimes I cry when I I'm tired every night. <laughs> If you guys like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. And if you want to see more of us in Disney World, go check out our Last to Leave Challenge, where the last to leave Disney World won a Disney cruise. We'll see, see you there. there. I'll be the blonde. Happy Halloween! This isn't real.